translated from Greek, uh, from the uh, Greek copy of Henry Aristippus in around 1160, translated from Arabic uh, by Gerard Mona in 1175. So, from the end of antiquity, uh, end of the Roman Empire, uh, 500, 600 AD, until 1100, it was not to be found in Europe, in Western Europe. Somebody mentioned shirk and also the Muhammad um, Islamic concept. In the book about the prayer, the Prophet's prayer, we have Muhammad forbidding people to raise their eyes to the sky during prayer. And he emphasized this order when he says, let the people stop raising their eyes to the sky in the prayer or let their sight not return to them. Muhammad is actually saying, if you raise your eyes during prayer, you will go blind. And this is why, this is the position of prayer in Islam. You are not supposed to look up to the sky. In another narration, if they look up to the sky, their, eyes, their sight will be taken away from them. Why is that? Well, because here's Plato. Plato is Polytheistic. It's Zeus, the great commander in heaven. He drives his winged chariot first in the procession. What's the procession? It's the path of the planets. He said the moon in the first circle, the sun above it, the dawn bearer, that's uh, Venus, the morning star, and the star said to be sacred to Hermes or Mercury. So these are the planets, the gods of the polytheistic religion. Now, just so that we know, Plato had a heavenly ascent for humans, for souls. He arrived in Republic, at the end of Republic, there were two openings in the heavens, there were two openings in the ground, and the just were ordered to go upward in the heavens to the door on the right, and the unjust were to travel downwards to hell toward it. Augustus commemorated the comet that appeared when Julius Caesar died. At his um, funeral games, a comet appeared, and according to Augustus, who was a very smart person as far as propaganda, he said, that is the soul of Julius Caesar going to the sky. And he commem commemorated that on point. Later on, Valerian II was shown, he died at an earliest, he was shown riding to the sky at the top of the ego of Jupiter. And this was a common theme amongst the Roman emperors. Once they died, they went to heaven and they looked down upon people from heaven. The Mithraic planter ladder can be found at a mosaic path in Austria. And you can see um, Mercury at the bottom, then Venus, then Mars, Jupiter. Very important, at the bottom you see the twin caps of the Dioscuri, Castor and Pollux, with stars above them. We will come back to that, keep it in mind. Michael Spassian talks about that mystery. He says that in that system, Soul, the soul ascends through the planetary, the planetary spheres at death, and he says that Mithraism was essentially the practical aspect of Platonism, and that that can be seen in this illustration from Macrobius's um, commentary on Cicero's Dream of Scipio, and again we find the ascension through the planets um, up to heaven. Heaven, in this case, is the Milky Way. You see that oval shape there? That's the Milky Way. Scipio Mises adopted um, ancestors.
he has on the bottom um, Venus, then Mars, and then Saturn on top. And this is all enveloped by the zodiacal light. Beautiful for the photograph. On the left, I took that picture with my iPhone um, in the supermarket, in the supermarket parking lot. On the bottom, uh, you have Venus. In the middle, you have the moon, top Jupiter. So this can be seen depending on the positioning of the planets. You can see the planetary stairway to heaven. A planetary stairway to heaven could be seen on the Roman standards. On, the, on top, you see a coin of uh, Mark Antony, uh, just before the fatal battle, um, where he lost control of the empire. He had 30 legions under him. Every single one of those legions had a coin like that. That coin up there is um, the Gio Quattro. And you see the planetary standard is signal. The planetary standard on the bottom, there's a crescent moon, and there are circles going up. Those are the planets. 100 years later, you can still see um, coins of Vespasian, the exact same. <coughs> Planetary standard, again, you have the crescent moon at the bottom, globular representation of the planets. In that eye, you go up to heaven through the planets. And Josephus actually quotes, no, Josephus actually describes the Romans once they captured Jerusalem. Um, the Romans carried their standards into the temple, they set them up opposite the, in, the eastern gate and sacrificed to them. So the, these were the planetary gods that the Romans worshipped. Planetary standard in the temple of Mars. Um, Augustus, when he became ruler of the Roman Empire, decided to retrieve the standards that had been lost to the party. Instead of going to war, with the Parthians, he negotiated diploma diplomatically with them. He, he paid a, a tribute for it, but they returned the standards. He had them installed in the Temple of Mars, Mars Ultor. So there you see the Eagle of Jupiter is in the Temple of Mars. You have the standards on each side, the Moon Crescent, and the other planetary symbols. Here is the Gate of Heaven. Milky Way on top, the Zodiac Light rises along the path of the planets, along the ecliptic. There are planets there. Those are the stairways up, stairways up to heaven, to the Milky Way, which is located at the intersection. That, you can also see in this tiny sphere. You have the ecliptic, the planets, the path of the planets, the zodiacal populations, and you see it intersected by the Milky Way. At the intersection of the Milky Way and the ecliptic stands Gemini, stands the Dioscuri, Castor and Pollux, they guard the gate of heaven. And here's a great coin that was struck by uh, Servilius around 136 BC. It shows the Dioscuri on their horses, two stars above them, Gemini with intersecting lines behind them. That's the intersection of the Milky Way and the ecliptic. This iconography would um, persist even when um, Constantine won his battle at the Milgan Bridge. They still used the iconography. They had the Lupa Romana suckling the twins, Romulus Remus, who founded Rome. Above them are the twins, the twin stars of um, Castor and Pollux because they are the patron saints of Rome. And in between them, by this time, you see the key row, it's the Christian symbol of the key row. So here we have an iconography that combines Christian and pagan symbols. And in this coin of a little bit later, around that time, the coin of Dalmatius. Dalmatius was a nephew of Constantine. Constantine was actually pretty good guy in this sense. His nephew was a junior um, emperor, and again we see the symbols. We have the planetary, um, planetary symbols along the 
shaft of the stigma or the center, but at the top you have the key rope. At this time you have the gates of heaven controlled by Christian symbolism. Unfortunately, that peaceful accommodation did not last. What happened is there were contentions in the army, the um, pagans revolted, the revolt was put down, and what we got was the planetary symbols along the, the shaft were gone. They were suppressed, they, were, they disappeared, and around the coin, the, the legend reads, Hope Signal Victor Eris. This was this would be twisted around later into in hoc signo vintis, but that is not the true situation. This is the, you can actually see it on this coin, hoc signo victor eris. This symbol will be the victor. This signal with the labarum, with the key roll on the labarum is the winner. And by 400, the Theodosian code would be implemented. What that means is that paganism, polytheism, was um, abolished. It was, you could, you could not worship, you could not uh, offer sacrifices to, to the polytheistic um, God. It is our will that old men shall abstain from sacrifices. Any man should perpetrate such criminality, he shall be struck down with the avenging sword. It was death penalty to polytheism, polytheism with, uh, incurred the death penalty. And not only was it <laughs> abolished, but the books that were connected to these beliefs, polytheistic beliefs, were wiped out. There was book burning throughout the Roman Empire. In the month of June, Greeks, several Greeks, that is pagans, were arrested taken forcibly from place to place, and their books were burned in the Kynadian. So were the images and statues of the miserable gods. The Kynadian is where the bodies of those condemned to death were flung. So the books and their statues of the gods were burned and thrown out. That was at the end of the Roman Empire, around 400. More than a thousand years later, Conquistadors come to the New World. And Bishop Diego de Landa writes that in the Maya, in the Maya domain, they found thousands of books, codices, that he himself says contained their sciences. And what we did, since all we found in them were lies of the devil, we burned them all. All those books, all those codices of the Maya were burned. For which, we don't know why, but they were very upset about it. And what happened is the language, not necessarily the uh, spoken language, but the written form, the written script of the Maya was wiped from memory. Michael Cole actually says, writes about this in Breaking the Maya Code. Thanks to the vicissitudes of time and the horrors of the Spanish invasion, all those precious documents are gone. Even the burning of the Library of Alexandria did not obliterate the civilization's heritage as completely as this. The burning of the Library of Alexandria? Well, Carl Spain talks about the burning of the library. The glory of the Alexandrian Library is in memory. It was as if the entire civilization had undergone some self-inflicted brain surgery, and its memories, discoveries, ideas were extinguished. The loss was incalculable, and he called this a thousand years of darkness. Now, let's be, let's be sure that this is about monotheism. In Istanbul, Taki al Din, around 1575, proposed an observatory be built in Istanbul. Murad III, the Sultan, agreed with this. It was built in two years. Within two years, the observatory and the library was up and running. Three years later, it was demolished. Why? The authors of this book write, the tragedy of the demolition
publication of the last observatory in Islam exemplifies the victory of the clerical faction over science. So, the clerics went over science. In Europe at this time, around this time also, we had Copernicus, who died around 1562. He could not publish his um, work until he was near death. He, he, he was about dying when they finally published his work. Giordano Bruno was burned at the stake in 1600 in Rome. Galileo was condemned to half the rest until the day he died. This is a great paper by 